This week, City Commissioner Sam Kaufman presented his plan to tackle Key West's affordable housing crisis. The meeting was hosted by local community watchdog and environmental group Last Stand. What do you call, this is a joke, what do you call a group of people that listen to politicians for four decades about affordable housing without any positive result? Key <laughs> <laughs> Westerners! And I really think we need to look at the $30,000 a year employees to the $55,000 a year employees. I, I, wanna, I think there's a misconception. The low-income housing, well, when we talk about low-income housing, we're talking about the $55,000 a year employees. Why do I say that? When we're talking about, just, it's important, this is very important, when we're talking about median income, median income for the county in, in, in Monroe County is $71,000 a year. That's, that's the median income, $71,000. When you say low income, that's 80% of median. 80% of 71 is 55. Okay, so low income means you're making 55, an individual making $55,000 a year. So I've heard people say, well, I don't want low income housing in my neighborhood. <laughs> what? It's, these are people making 55,000. So what's, what's very low income? Very low income is, is 50% of median. Right? What does that mean? So what's 50% of 71? $35,000 a year. So $35,000 a year is very low income. So you're so people say I don't want the very low pe income people living next to me. That's not. I mean, that's thirty-five thousand dollars a year is pretty good for, for a lot of people, you know. So spread the word that low income is is okay. It's the people that like us, the people. Make Commissioner Kaufman's plan is, is to reserve one hundred percent of the last seven hundred building right allocations in Key West for low income affordable workforce housing. The state. Uh, of Florida allowed Key West an additional 900 units uh, to be built on the island. Okay, and this came down in 2013. The state said, uh, and this, this, this all has to do with hurricane evacuation, right? The idea is you don't want to have too many units, too many people on the island uh, at a time of evacuation when people can't leave. And that's why um, um, there's a, a certain, there's a limitation on how many units we can have on the island. A little bit under 200 of those units have already been allocated. So there's about 700 of these units left. Everyone following? Yeah. Okay. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about what to do with these precious few remaining units um, and how to allocate them. Units. Do we want them to go to people that can afford to have a second home or, or should the public policy be to where our critical need is? And that is to affordable housing. Now, a concern has come up that um, you know people have vacant lots, and on the island there are 123 vacant lots. So this will, this proposal and this process has nothing to do with that because the city has already set aside separate land allocated units available for those vacant lots. So the question is, if we don't preserve these 700 units, where will those units come from? Questions. If if you agree with me. And if you agree, I think it's really important that you make your voice heard. You need to walk. I hit 800 doors. I know that pe most people who need it the most are not in this room because they're working two, three jobs. They got the kids. They're living with two families in the, in the, in the, in the trailers, the stadium trailer park. They're not here because they can't be here. We have to speak to them. Additional unit. So, oh, he's excited about mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> To help with this plan, Call Commissioner Kaufman has enrolled a man on the inside, this, this a champion of developers' dreams, land planner Owen Trepanier. If Mission Impossible had a land planner, the part would go to Mr. Trepanier. Part of his job is to convince developers to support the plan. <laughs> so, my name is Owen Trepanier. Thank you for your patience. Uh, my husband, Richard, is taking the kids to Tennessee for a, for a summer camp, and so it's Andre and I. <laughs> Six weeks. And uh, we're, we're implementing the City Commission Resolution 16116, which is to ensure that all remaining building permit allocations are used for affordable housing, vacant lots, and beneficial use. Um, that's the, that's the uh, resolution the City Commission passed, I think, about three months ago. We're taking the traditional 
regulatory framework for affordable housing in Key West, and we're inverting it. Right now, you can build, uh, build 70% of a housing project as market rate, as long as you build 30% as affordable. So what we're gonna do is, we went and met with uh, developers, and they've been great. They're not happy, uh, but they were, they've helped us at least write the minimum uh, incentives into the code where they think affordable, you know, people will still be able to fund projects. And that is that 80% of the project to be affordable, 20% to be market rate. So we're just taking the whole system and flipping it, flipping it over. Uh, we're, we're proposing to eliminate all future uh, B pass allocations or robo allocations for transient. It's just cool. no more. Yeah. No more yeah. that, that doesn't make some people clap. <laughs> we're, uh, and then to, to be, we're, we want to address what I believe is the largest impact on the elimination of affordable housing in the West, which is uh, the conversions to second homes. And that is that just houses all over town, you know, they're bought up, they're renovated, and they become part time residents uh, uh, for second home market. And, and what we're proposing to do is, is uh, we have this problem right now where people that have bought these big, old, beautiful houses, or little, ugly ones, that were, <laughs> to, that, that were carved up into little apartments. And they bought these, and they've done away with all the apartments, and they build them back into single-family homes. These, some of them are be beautiful, grand mansions in town that are now single-family homes. But those units, they counted under hurricane evacuation. But our, our rules don't allow anybody to do anything. And the city used to, city planners used to just, they would sort of like, uh, um, I can't find the euphemism for steel. Uh, they, would, they, would, they would just take them back. They would just take them back. And, 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 and our city attorney put a stop to that. And he said, you know, those are people's property rights. They belong to those people. Even if they can't do anything with them, they're still their property rights. So we have all these properties all over town that have these unused rogo units that are just stuck there. So what we're proposing to do is, is, to, is to create a system whereby these people, the developers that want to build second homes, they can go buy those units from somebody. And they, um, so we're, we've also, the, uh, business, some business people came to me and said, the problem that they have is there's a one year residency requirement. You can't even qualify to live in affordable housing until you've lived here for one year. They asked us to just eliminate that because they, they can't recruit somebody to come down and, and then they've got a, you know, it's like a hazing ceremony. Right. You know, you <laughs> so so that this, this amendment, and, and I've got a few copies here, so you're welcome to read the, uh, what we're done. And it just eliminates that one year and your residency is proven by your driver's license, your state ID, or your voter registration. Hopefully and then came the moment when some people in the room felt that the proposed incentives to big business might be going a bit too far. So if you can build a, a building you know, this big, then you can build small units in a building this big, and you can put as many in there as you can. And, so, uh, and that it counts the same as the AIDS Help Housing, which is you can have 10 small units. That's from 250 to 400 square foot units per rogo unit, as long as you have a built-in hurricane evacuation system for the development. Oh, and uh, I just want to say strapping that adorable baby to your chest doesn't make you, doesn't make you any less of a target. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good try. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, everything about the resolution is very, it's very convoluted and it's very complicated. I keep seeing the big neon sign above you saying density, density, density. And the other, the other issue is it's not enough to just say 80, 20, 80 affordable. You have to be really specific about what that affordable is. Like uh, Commissioner Kaufman said, if you want the low and the very low, you got to write that in there because affordable is not always affordable. Yeah. So you Okay. Um, as an owner, I like most of your ideas. I think your idea of where you take 10 mini units to one rogo is very, very, very dangerous to anyone living here in Key West. That was at the 2010 um, hurricane evacuation hearings where we tried to get more units down here. 
A robo is because we have to be able to evaluate, evacuate. And if you take 700 units, if you take 500 of those, and you multiply it times 10, you have, what is that, 10,000 units? What's 500 times 10? Okay, multiply that times two people. You know, Matt Strahan, a, a meteorologist from years ago, it's not if a the major hurricane hits, it's when. And you know, he said to me, what's the most dangerous hurricane you had in 405? I'm on Rita, or I'm on Wilma Dems. It was Rita. Rita passed us as a tropical storm, I think it was a four by the time I got to the Marquesas. So if you're gonna do the 10 units to one robo, and you think you're gonna have these hotels going, oh, we're gonna evacuate people, it's not going to happen. I call it the blood on your hands portion of this ordinance, because people will die. We can't evacuate. How can you, uh, it's written into our code that those people can promise to leave and then it's okay, we can have more units. Just for these assisted living type facilities, right? And you guys are talking about just sort of any worker. <laughs> so I don't know, right? So the justification That's is it. not necessarily the same. As far as and like Sam said, we're trying to, we're trying to do something that will, that will incentivize and create the opportunity to have more affordable housing in Key West, to get it built rather than second homes. And so uh, if, if this is an idea that just is not the time, may never be the time, then we jettison it. And we go with the stuff that we, that we can do. Because we want to do the most good. We don't want to battle down in flames over one provision. You know, so, Carl. Uh, yeah, when it comes, you said something about being able to evacuate people in a Cat 5 storm in the West. That's probably a surge of a good 20 feet, which was the case in the Matacombe Key uh, Labor Day storm of 35, I think it was. I can't see how anyone would survive that, especially considering with 150 mile an hour plus sustained winds. Now, how can you survive or even consider that as being part of any of the scenario? I mean, adding about 200 people a year to the Key West population. That's as many as we can possibly build. So somehow we've got to get a, a, a handle on how do we limit growth. 